tonight to catch a predator. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on your knees! Back your head! Back your head! Please, please, down, 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 down. American tactics to fight online pedophiles come to the UK. In the past year, we've arrested two magistrates, company directors, police officers, people who you would think are pillars of the community. But unfortunately, when you scratch the surface, are in fact predatory pedophiles. Confronting the pedophiles targeting our children. You get sexual gratification from watching pictures of girls at 10 and 12 years old. Don't you? Okay. Don't you? So how are you going to get, how are you going to stop doing that, Martin? I'm concerned that you're going to walk away from here now, Martin, and it's going to continue. I'm Mark Williams Thomas, and for 12 years I worked as a detective tracking down paedophiles and putting them behind bars. But growing popularity of internet chat sites means that children are more vulnerable now than they ever have been. Tonight, I'm going to show you what sort of person at this very moment could be trying to groom a child in your family. Hi, Martin. Mark Williams Thomas from uh, Tonight with Trevor McDonald. Who are we talking to? No. Quickly trying to close that down. We've been talking to a young girl, haven't we, Martin? Yeah. Becca, yes? Young girl from England? Yes, I do. And how old is she? She's 12, isn't she? Martin Schlecht is a former German priest with a worrying interest in young girls, and he targets sites used by British teenagers. Because actually, Martin, you've been communicating with someone who isn't 12 years old. I think you understand that now, don't you? But how do we come across a 36-year-old man trawling the net trying to befriend young schoolgirls? Let's jump back to the start. Our investigation began with the help of this man, 22-year-old Adam Hildreth. He's an internet entrepreneur at the forefront of fight against online predators. His company is developing new software for parents to help alert them to paedophiles on the net. And to test the software, one of Adam's team has entered the chat room as an 11-year-old girl called Becky. So Adam, tell me about Becky. Um, Becky was um, an 11 year old girl from Wales, um, essentially gone online to find new friends in a teen chat room. And what happened when she went into this chat room? Uh, within five minutes a bit, she had various approaches from different people, but the main one, uh, the most constant one, was uh, an approach from a 36 year old from Germany um, called Martin. How did it move on from his initial approach? Um, it was actually very, very open and honest. He mentioned being a priest in Peru, um, he talked about what he did, how he had younger girls as friends. Um, we think to give reassurance to Becky that you know he was fine and could be trusted. That's right, this 36-year-old man talking to what he thinks is an 11-year-old girl is a former Catholic priest. And he makes it clear she wasn't his only online friend. My other contacts are girls, girls of about 10 to 14, no boys. Why don't you talk to boys? No, I, I prefer talking to girls. Why? I feel more attracted by girls. Oh, you're not meant to like girls, you're a church person. You're right, I shouldn't like the girls so much, but it is like it is, I cannot change it. The conversations between Martin and Becky were about to take a still more sinister turn. We'll find out more later. In part, our investigation was inspired by an American television program to catch a predator. Do you ever watch television? Yes, I do. Do you ever watch Dateline NBC? No, never. We have a show called To Catch a Predator. Right. And you're on it right now. This man was charged with attempted sexual assault of a minor online after appearing on To Catch a Predator. The program began as a one-off look at the work of a group of internet volunteers pervertedjustice.com. He's going to be here in just a minute, so it's going to get interesting. They pose as boys and girls aged between 10 and 15 in kids-only chat rooms. Then, on their website, they name and shame online paedophile predators. But with American Show Dateline, they've taken their fight a step further. In a series of stings, a programme has rigged houses with hidden cameras, to film anyone who turns up after grooming online. They've gone on to expose more than 250 online predators. 
Chris Hansen is the award-winning reporter who fronts the program. I think there's a big difference between, you know, seeing a newspaper article or attending a news conference where the police are talking about arresting somebody for having been involved in this sort of activity and seeing it play out in what is undeniably a compelling and dramatic way. You know, when people actually see me talking to these yeah. guys, and I'm not there to be the police or to be the prosecutor, I'm there to get information out of them, to figure out what they were thinking, what was going on in their mind that led them to do this. And to see that real people from all walks of life are engaging in this kind of activity it has been shocking to most Americans, I think. This man has turned up at the rigged house in New Jersey after talking to a teenager online. Casey is posing as the 14-year-old virgin he met over the internet. He was really talking to a decoy from perverted justice. Within minutes, the man is confronted by Chris Hansen. How you doing? Hi. Good. What's your seat right next to What you got in your back pocket there? My phone. No, the other back pocket. May I see it? What is that? It's um, KY. Lubricating John. Yep. What were you going to use that for? Was intending on being with her. And how old is John? 14. The man is Richard Burnham, a former firefighter and a 42-year-old divorced father of three. Yes. This goes on for some 20 days, by the way. Mm. That's called grooming. What do you think would have happened had there been a 14-year-old girl here home alone? I think it's pretty evident. Pretty evident. All right. I'll leave right now. Well, I'm going to be in trouble once I go. And it's not up to me. You should take your jelly. Okay. Burnham has since been charged with attempted house. sexual Informed assault of a minor and online. Him. Please get on the ground! Get on the ground! Do not resist. But are there any common traits in the predators who turn up at these things? The vast majority of these guys come from all walks of life. They don't stand out of a crowd. They don't have predator tattooed across their forehead. They could be the guy standing next to you in the grocery store or the dry cleaners on a Saturday morning. These tactics of posing in chat rooms as teenagers to expose online predators have also been adopted by some British police forces. Nick Stevens is the head of Metropolitan Police's paedophile unit. Internet grooming is a big problem. There's no doubt about that. The more that we get into internet grooming, the more uh, officers we deploy onto the internet, the more investigations we run on the internet certainly bring home the numbers to us. The, the numbers are increasing. There is a risk that your child will go online into a social networking site and they will be communicating with someone who they don't know and that person is an online groomer. That person is a paedophile who will send, who will distribute child abuse imagery or adult pornography, will attempt to groom your child and eventually try and meet your child for sexual reasons. 18 months ago, Nick Stevens' team began posing as teenagers on the internet. Since then, they've arrested 50 British online groomers. In America, the To Catch a Predator team found a surprising range of predators. Could you explain yourself? Including college students. Because I was trying to impress the girl. I was trying to impress a 14-year-old girl. I don't know what I was thinking, sir. Through to professionals, including doctors and even a rabbi. What do you do for a living? A rabbi. That's right, a rabbi. The man who sent naked pictures of himself is a man of God. In Britain, the police stings have produced much the same result. These people normally are middle class persons who have no previous convictions. Quite often they will be married or in a long term relationship. Quite often have children. In the past year, we've arrested two magistrates, company directors, police officers and other persons who are heavily involved in children activities such as running scouts, the guides, cubs and sporting groups. So people who you would think are pillars of the community but unfortunately when you scratch the surface are in fact predatory paedophiles. As a former priest Martin Schlecht should be a pillar of his community. Remember, he started off wanting to be friends with what he thought was an 11-year-old schoolgirl, Becky. But 
Just weeks into their online relationship, Martin sent her explicit images of naked girls and asked her to send him some personal items. I was thinking about something. If you would also post me your panties. I was too shy to ask you before, but now I ask you directly. What do you want those for? That's gross. Ew. Just to have a memory. Martin then says he wants to arrange a meeting with Becky. He thinks she's a child, but in reality she's a researcher helping develop software to protect children from groomers like him. When we go anywhere, we would pretend being dad and daughter. I have a daddy already. Yes, you have, you're right. But I mean, if you go around, we would pretend this. Then we go to eat at a restaurant, for instance. Yeah, I guess. Why couldn't you go as my friend there? Because there's a considerable difference of age, and this kind of friendship is weird for many people. They would think other things, like that I'm a child molester. Sending emails like this landed this man in court. Richard Finlay is a former history teacher at a school attended by Princess Beatrice. He tried to groom what he thought was a 12-year-old girl on the internet. What he didn't realise was he was talking to an undercover detective. He sent the undercover officer, who he thought was a 12-year-old girl, child abuse imagery, adult pornography. He spoke in graphic detail about exactly what activity he wanted to undertake with that child and had a number of um, communications with that child, not just on the internet. We identified Richard Finlay as being a teacher, teaching girls of the same age as he was attempting to groom, and actually grooming, and we arrested him immediately upon establishing his identity. The court was told Finlay's fantasy never became a reality, and he didn't abuse his position at school. Finlay, from Berkshire, was given a 12-month suspended sentence in November last year. But this man, seen here trying to hide his identity, went a step further. Sean Pudwell took indecent photographs of children and targeted young girls through social networking sites. David, not his real name, is the father of one of the girls Pudwell tried to meet. Tell me how Sean Pudwell groomed your daughter. Well, he first made contact trying to say he wanted to be a friend, saying he was a 15-year-old lad. And as it progressed, a couple of chats went on, and after about three or four weeks, he admitted how old he was. 38, I think he said, and that he wanted to meet young girls. He sent these emails with his photo on them, advised her to look at them, saying how he liked to dress, and she opened them up, and she was upset at the disgusting, filthy images that were in there. And what was on these photographs, and how many... I think there was about eight or nine photographs, all in different forms of undress, with plastic see-through under, underpants with an erection and playing with himself. And it was just sick, sick, horrible. And what's been the impact, not just on you, but on the family and most importantly on your daughter? My daughter's just not as outgoing with things on the internet, basically. She won't talk to anyone. And I think I have been overprotective ever sometimes, and it causes a lot of arguments. And I'm always wanting her in and where she is. And she's 15 now and I've got to let her go a little bit. But I just don't do it. Two months ago, Pudwell was found guilty of trying to groom David's daughter and two other girls. He was also found guilty of making indecent photographs of children. He was jailed for three and a half years. But are we tough enough with the predators who groom our children on the internet? Good evening, a worldwide search is on tonight for a 12-year-old girl from Greater Manchester. This man, former US Marine Toby Studebaker, sexually assaulted a 12-year-old British girl he met online. He was sentenced to four and a half years in prison after pleading guilty to child abduction and inciting a child to commit gross indecency. Parry Aftab is a lawyer and America's leading internet safety campaigner. In the UK, you have very good laws on grooming, but not very long sentences. And you have judges who are not as willing to give out long sentences as they sometimes are in the United States. Studebaker was released from prison last June after serving more than three years behind bars and deported to the US to face federal charges. Now, back in America, he faces between five and 40 years in prison. 
The public expects higher sentences. Everyone's watching. They're watching the judging. They're looking at the prosecutors. They're making sure that the case is being handled in the right way and that people go to jail. Undeniably, To Catch a Predator has had huge success in the States. But there are critics. Last year, one target of a sting operation committed suicide. But campaigners argue that the high profile given to online grooming by the success of the programme has had a big impact on parents and children. To Catch a Predator has changed safety online. We've learned that kids are using safer behaviours, they're looking out for each other and they're being a lot more careful than they had before. And parents are more concerned than ever before. They're now paying attention to what their kids are doing online. So the show has made people safer online. I think you could set this up, uh, an investigation like this, and do it in virtually every country in the world. Could work in the UK, could work in Asia, it could work just about everywhere. Our own investigation into Martin Schlecht was proceeding at pace. The former pre-CML conversations indicated to me that he could present a real danger to children. Remember, he'd admitted he was in contact with other young girls as well as our fictional Becky. My other contacts are girls, girls of about 10 to 14. I decided to travel to Germany and meet the police in his hometown of Rottweil. They've been given a detailed file on Sleck's relationship with Becky. Nevertheless, as I arrived in Germany, the online conversations were continuing. His latest conversations are getting even more worrying. He's clearly very, very uh, involved. He's just completely absorbed by her. His whole life now is saying that he's revolving around her. He's saying that he's uh, in love with her. He's saying that he wants to go over and see her as soon as possible. He's saying that he wants to massage her. He's very careful in the way he does it, though. He's very calculated. He's very, in the way that he asks a question, but then he also pulls back after having done that um, so as not to alert her and scare her. So he doesn't go all the way down. He's very careful. And this is classic grooming behaviour. But events were moving fast. That morning, police arrested Schleck and raided his house, confiscating his computer. Incredibly, Just hours after his release, I discovered he was in an internet cafe contacting Becky again. It was time to confront him. Hello, Martin. Mark Williams Thomas from uh, Tonight with Trevor McDonald. Who are we talking to? Quickly trying to close that down. We've been talking to a young girl, haven't we, Martin? Mm -hmm. Becca, yes? Young girl from England? Yes, I do. And how old is she? She's 12, isn't she? At first, Martin was reluctant to talk, but once faced with the transcripts of his online chats, he opened up. Because actually, Martin, you've been communicating with someone who isn't 12 years old. I think you understand that now, don't you? I just talk. Talk online. And you talk to other girls as well, don't you, on the internet? Yes. And in a lot of the material you've got, we've seen, you've also talked about liking to walk down the high street with her, going to the cinema, to a restaurant and hold her hand, but how that would be very difficult because it's viewed differently by different people. It is a kind of fantasy. A fantasy. And what about being a priest? Do you not think that that's, that makes it even worse? I'm not uh, practicing my priesthood now. Okay, but you are still an ordained and priest. for that problem, I had to see how to get rid of my frustrations and how to manage this crisis I'm passing through, actually, since uh, three years. So you, you've been, had a sexual interest in children for the last three years? I've never met a girl with any sexual interest. I only watched pics of them on the net. Yes. Have you watched videos of children? Also, yes. And what age children do you like? I mean, I know because I've read here, About but you tell me. 10, 12, 14. Okay. You've never met one? No, never. But you'd like to have met Becky, wouldn't you? If you'd had the money to get there? I don't have money, and if I had, I wouldn't uh, take the risk. Because I know that it is very dangerous, and I could get in lots of trouble with the law. But do you think you need help? But I think a psychologist cannot help so easy. So who's going to help you? Who's going to stop you getting... You get sexual gratification from watching pictures of girls at 10 and 12 years old. Don't you? Okay. Don't you? So how are you going to, get, how are you going to stop doing that, Martin? I'm concerned that you're going to walk away from here now, Martin, and it's going to continue. 
Martin, just, John, just talk to me last time. I'm concerned you're going to walk away from here and it's going to continue. You were searched this morning and you know the police have now got photographs of children on your computer, correct? Yes. Yeah. You come straight back into the cafe this afternoon and continue talking to a young girl. It didn't make any difference, did it? You've talked to her this afternoon and told her how she makes you feel. She makes you feel really happy and you'd like to kiss her, you'd like to hold her hand. No, no, I was talking about her um, to know if she was the person who reported me. Right. But you still talk to her and she's 12 years old. Yes. You didn't stop that communication with a 12-year-old child, did you? That is my decision. You need to go and get some help now. So you need to sort out your inclination, your desire for young girls. Okay, I have to go now. Okay, all right, fine. German police are continuing their inquiries into this former priest. We've been able to expose Martin Schlecht with the help of one company researching online groomers. Adam Hildreth's team has developed anti-grooming software as part of the fight back against internet predators like Martin. Well, I mean, we've been in this space really for two years because we realised that this problem was only going to get bigger. So we're trying to provide the tools to parents that allow them to at least help them manage the problem so it can spot relationships getting to a stage like Martin's was, um, so they can do something about it. But there's also an education side of things as well, making sure everyone's aware of the tactics and what's happening. And so it's not about blocking children from using these websites or stopping them communicating with friends. It's about protecting them when they're on there. The great news is, is that if you teach your kids to not give away specific information, there's no magical way a predator is going to come through the internet line and end up in your house. You know, that information has to be given out so that contact can be made, the meeting can take place. So if you protect your kids in that way, you know, that's 90% that's of the battle. Meanwhile, more forces around Britain look set to send undercover detectives into chat rooms to track down the online predators. Detective Chief Inspector Nick Stevens has a stark warning for any paedophile thinking of going into a kid's chat room tonight. You've got to be very, very careful around your activity that you do on the internet because the person that you'll be speaking to may well be a police officer. Parents worried about the issues of online grooming can take simple steps to safeguard their children. Firstly, ensure the computer is in a family room. Secondly, talk to your children about who they're communicating with online. Finally, keep an eye on what sites your children are visiting. If you're concerned, use filtering software. For more details, go to our website, itv.com forward slash tonight. Coming up on Wednesday, Britain's biggest house price falls. As the housing market turns, what are the implications for your home? In 2008, prices will fall around 10% and over the next four or five years, prices nationally will fall 30 to 40%. It's a very gloomy forecast. It's not going to be pretty, that's for sure. That's on Wednesday night at 10 o'clock. Until then, good night and thank you for watching. Will Liam be OK? And if he is, will he still be all right after Maria gets hold of him? The disaster's far from over in Coronation Street next. Then post-traumatic stress, hallucination and murder. A Wire in the Blood US special tonight at nine. We need someone down here now. The place is about to go into meltdown. Who? I'm the most sought-after producer in the industry. The man's a moron. You really think you're the man to take on Coronation Street? Is the Pope Polish? No, he isn't. It's a soap. A born leader. They'll hate me. They're fighters. They hate everybody. Daniel Merritt's now 40 with an Australian accent, and Susan is 30-something with dark hair. Looks a bit like Tiffany from EastEnders. Call in a crisis. <laughs> a one-man hit factory. We are about to change the face of British television. Welcome to Echo Beach. He writes it, they live it. Is it your first time here? I live here. I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. You want to see around? Oh, a small place. What are you doing here, Danny? I've been away for nearly 20 years, isn't that long enough? No, it's not. Jason Donovan, Martin McCutcheon and Hugo Spear. I will do whatever it takes to get that man out of my life. Moving Wallpaper, the drama behind the soap Echo Beach. Thursday from 9 on ITV1. Gorgeous, isn't it? Not that. My tetley red bush. 
Welcome to the Cedarbeck Mountains in South Africa, the home of new Tedley Redbush. It tastes lovely with milk or without milk. Or without milk. And it's hydrating, like water. Go away, you naughty boy! And there's no caffeine, so sweet dreams. Be quiet! People are sleeping! In the beginning, some clever sort invented the engine. Engines, though, another clever sort pointed out, burn fuel and produce CO2, contributing to climate change. But there are simple ways to cut engine CO2, like keeping revs down and driving smoothly. This reduces engine workload and helps to burn less fuel, which is good for everyone. To find out more about reducing your engine CO2 emissions, search online for Acton CO2. by Nick Hancock, a brand new game show, Duel, coming soon to ITV1. A one-off feature-length thriller as Dr. Tony Hill finds himself in America and in grave danger. Wire in the blood in half an hour. After Maria may finally have found Liam, but had she already lost him in Coronation Street? <laughs>